Good day, I'm Dr. Michael Reardon. I'm a cardiac surgeon at the Houston Methodist Devahey Heart and Vascular Center. I've been in, interested in valve disease my entire career and I've lately been very interested in transcatheter valve disease. I've served as the overall study principal investigator for the SIRTAVI trial, the Evolute Low Risk trial, the Reprise 3 trial, the Accurate trial, and the Portico NG trial. So this is something I have a, a deep interest in and as somebody who's treated valve disease all his life, how we move forward with this session, the lifetime management of aortic valve disease, hemodynamics and durability, and what's needed to achieve these is very important to me. What's needed in our next generation valve device are a couple things. First of all, we'd like to achieve near normal hemodynamics. Where you're going to younger patients, they're gonna be more active and normal hemodynamics is gonna be very important. Secondly, we need to have extended durability. As we move to younger patients, we need these valves to last longer and longer. And finally, we need to be thinking about the future in these younger patients because they may need more than one procedure. So we'll need good coronary access. We'll need the ability to do valve and valve if necessary. And we need a valve that's designed to allow all those things to occur. So when we look to improve our tower devices to reach near normal hemodynamics, you need to know what the hemodynamics are out there. And we certainly have grading for uh, mild, moderate, and severe aortic stenosis. And we'd certainly like to get as close to normal as we can. So we look at things such as mean gradient, velocity, and DVI. And what we see with the Duraval is that the hemodynamics we've seen in surgical implants give us a mean gradient of 7.4. We give an aortic valve area of 2.4 and a DVI of 0.66. So these are really great things. One of the things we know from Gorlin's early work is we don't have an EOA of at least two. You can't really increase your flow without increasing your gradient. These younger patients are gonna be active in their exercise. We need EOAs above two. Well, I think that we have several things we need to do to improve our current tower devices. We know that the superannular self-expanding valve has the best hemodynamics currently right now in the market, but that the balloon expandable valves tend to be easier and more reliable to implant. But what we'd like to see is a balloon expandable valve that can match the hemodynamics of the self-expanding uh, superannular valve. And this valve is designed to do that. And to achieve these things, what we need is a combination of both valve design and tissue engineering. This valve is designed to have near no normal opening because it's a one piece design. We think the durability is gonna be improved both because this one piece design has less suture lines and the tissue we use, the ADAPT tissue has been well tested to show uh, uh, durability in young patients, pediatric patients. And lastly, this valve is going to have an ability to rotate at the level of the commissure so we can line up the commissures, not at the handle level, but at the level of the annulus. We think all these things will give us a short, super annular valve that gives coronary access, commissure alignment, and near normal hemodynamics, and we think very extended durability. So we think that the Dura-AVR is going to last longer and work better for a couple of reasons. Again, this is a combination of both how we design the valve and the tissue engineering that goes into the tissue valve itself. This is a single piece construction that's mounted on a balloon. It's much like that we took the Osaki surgical single piece aortic valve replacement and made it easy by mounting it on a metal frame that's a balloon expandable. We think this is gonna give us optimal EOAs. We also use a tissue uh, treated with ADAPT. ADAPT has a long history of well over 10,000 implants, many pediatric implants. We as surgeons, and I think interventionists now know, that the younger you are when we put in biologic tissue, the faster it fails. And then children adapt has done very well without calcification. And finally, we have a commissure delivery system that is going to be easy, flexible, and allow a, a very reproducible delivery, as well as commissure alignment done at the annular level. We think commissure alignment to allow coronary access and potential future valve and valve is exceedingly important. And we think we can achieve all these goals. I want to thank you very much for joining this session. I hope this has been helpful to you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting.